Um, when uh, preparing this um, uh, this dialogue, I uh, had to think back of um, uh, an, um, an, an article written by uh, Rem Koas in 1994, uh, which was subsequently published in um, in OMS and uh, Bruce Mouse work uh, SMLXL, uh, whatever happened to urbanism? And it des describes actually the point uh, when uh, when needed most, uh, when cities are uh, doubling or tripling within years or decades rather than uh, centuries, that uh, actually uh, urbanism as a skill is uh, absent. Um, and um, um, he argues that this absence is actually ingrained in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in urbanism as a profession itself. And perhaps there are some, some sort of uh, similarity when we're thinking about planning. Uh, planning, as in spatial planning, shares a little bit of that fate. Yeah? Um, so, particularly, of course, in uh, in places like the Netherlands, where uh, space is so scarce that planning really becomes, uh, or is felt to be of key importance, and every square meter has a certain uh, purpose, or or at least imagined purpose. Um, that um, that we feel that at moments when uh, particularly after such a dramatic uh, video uh, that uh, at the moment when it's needed most um, the, um, the tools and traits of planning uh, as you would imagine as as um, as as a, as a skill um, that is possible to look a little bit ahead uh, that that is able to think of strategies uh, and concepts to cope with uh, with the uh, with these big challenges. Uh, that um, tries to balance the needs and the available resources. You would imagine that planning at that day and age, or at this day and age, would be uh, available and be accepted uh, as as a, an important voice. Um, Obviously, there is a certain uh, morbid air irony here at the moment, where uh, where we feel that actually that that there is, um, in terms of spatial planning, we're at the moment where it's least seen as a solution. Um, of course, we've seen a dramatic change in political landscape um, in, from from the period when this strong spatial planning was uh, was in, uh, installed in the Netherlands in post-war times. Uh, economic liberalization, changes in uh, socio-economic circumstances as well. So you can. It's also hard to imagine that uh, that the same kind of uh, role and same kind of um, qualities and skills would would fit to uh, to this uh, day and age however at the moment it's interesting to see in the dutch press it's um, there's new calls for reinstalling a coordinating ministry um, and uh, we've heard of pressure groups who are already preparing to uh, uh, to reinstall this kind of central coordination uh, after the coming uh, election so um, uh, it, it, it's interesting to see that this kind of debate is, uh, is, uh, is coming back, uh, recentralization of planning. But perhaps this is actually not the right approach. And I think this is um, the discussion that I would like to have uh, today. Um, and it's, um, it's very nice that we can also welcome today um, um, someone to participate in the panel that actually first brought up this um, idea, uh, Ruth Hopner of the Veld Academy, um, both a social scientist and architect and urbanist, so interesting combination, last year in the third uh, planning dialogue series, uh, um, told, uh, told the audience actually that uh, the planning skills and capacities should be made available for all. So it should not be limited to a small group of professionals who are thinking ahead and, co and coming up with strategies, but should actually be shared as a, as a quality with a much larger group of societal players. And in that respect could gain much bigger traction in society um, and uh, have a bigger effect than just uh, a small group of very special so-called people 
uh, who could define uh, the roads ahead. Um, Annette Kempenaar uh, from, uh, from Rijksuniversiteit Groningen added uh, to that in our conversation while preparing this, uh, uh, this conversation of uh, this afternoon, that uh, in this process, um, and I think it has been addressed by, by a lot of people uh, recently, um, it's very important um, that spatial design uh, as a quality is added to that. Uh, imagining the future, uh, thinking of um, images of how this future could be positively perceived, what kind of solution could come out, um, is something that uh, allows uh, for, um, for taking up um, uh, and, and taking with us a large parts of society. And of course, such a role of imagining the future and, and creating images that, that has, have this quality uh, requires a lot of practice and, and, and skills that are perhaps not as easily be transferable. Um, and of course, these are qualities that are only developed after a long period of time. And, um, so I think it's interesting to see uh, what kind of skills um, we can uh, address that are that have this quality of being transferable uh, and which are not, which require some sort of professionality um, in the context of uh, of the of the big, large, uh, monumental, you could say, uh, challenges that come forward out of the um, um, the issues at hand, uh, primarily, of course, climate change and everything that follows suit.